Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Pinpoint. This was sent to me by Nabu Games, and is designed by Brett Sobel and Seth Van Orden. It's a 3-in-1 party game uh, with 1-in-100, 1-to-100. One one, one player gives a clue to help the other players guess a specific number between 1 and 100. 1-to-10. Uh, teams of two answer questions on a scale of 1-to-10 and win by answering similarly. And least most. Vote for whom is least and most likely to do something. Pick the most popular answers to win. Let me show you how to play. So first, let's go through 1 to 100. Uh, first off, uh, you draw a pinpoint card, which have these different comparisons on it. You can choose one, or you can roll the die. Uh, I rolled an 8, so I picked this one. 1. Skill you are glad you don't have, and 100 skill you wish you had. Then the clue giver will draw a number card, and they will roll the die again. In this case, 3. So they have to try to get everyone to guess the number 26. Then the clue giver has to give a clue that best represents that number on that scale. So if the scale is, like I said, skill you're glad you don't have, skill you wish you had, one for this could be, hmm. This isn't, I can't really th even think of a great answer for this, but mine will, my suggestion will be, I don't know, um, memorizing every commercial jingle you hear. So that'll be my my clue. Everybody else will then take one of these boards and they're gonna try to guess the number. So I'll guess 35. And everybody writes down a guess. After everyone reveals their guesses, then you score. The clue giver scores one point if any guesser is within 10 of the secret number. Another point if any guesser got the secret number exactly right and a point if enough guessers are within 10 of the secret number based on this table here. Um, so, yeah. Guessers got a point for guessing within 10, for guessing the secret number exactly, and for being closest to the secret number. If tied, all tied players earn a one point. You can earn a maximum of three points in a single round. There is also cooperative scoring, which in that case, scorekeeper, you get one for each guesser within 10, two points for each guesser who guesses it correctly, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then you have like a ranking table, I guess, at the end. So that is one to a hundred. So if you look on here, some examples like dry to moist, clean job to dirty job, worst Disney character to best Disney character, worst thing for the nineties, best thing for the nineties, worst person to be your boss, best person to be your boss. Now let's go on to one to ten, which is the other game mode or another game mode. In this case, you flip the boards over and use this side instead. Let's say. I'm playing with, uh, I don't know, uh, he's not here, but Jay, my friend Jay, is my, is my teammate. Rosie D plays games with Jay. Um, now, what you do is um, divide everyone into teams of two and give the active player a die, or you can choose one, we'll roll a die. Okay, one, who's most likely to fall asleep in class? Now, both teammates, let's say this is my board and this is quote-unquote Jay's board, you're going to circle the number that you think is more likely. So, in my, in my opinion, I'm probably more likely to fall asleep. I'm going to circle the two. Jay on his board might be like, mm, okay, yeah, I think he's also likely to do it. He'll do like a three. Then, once you've written it, you reveal your boards. Your team scores a point if you answer on the same side of the middle line. You score a point if you answer within one of each other, which in this case we did, and one point if you guess exactly the same number. Uh, then you just discard the card and go, go to the next one. Uh, and that's that's it. Some examples on here. Who's most likely to be, believe a conspiracy theory? Who's most likely to make the greatest hairdresser? Follow their doctor's recommendations? Pay more for a product that is better for the environment. Those are some of the examples you can have for that. And the final game mode is called Least Most. There are two different ways. In the character version, you have six characters. The active player will roll the die or choose one of these prompts. Okay, a five. Who's most likely to watch a black and white film? So then everybody is going to write who they think is least likely of these six and most likely to. Who's most likely to watch a black and white film? I don't know, I'll say Iron Man. And least is uh, Eve. Once everyone's done, you all reveal your answers for what you picked for least. 
and you use these tokens to mark where you, so let's say for at least two people said this, one said this, two said this, like that. You score one point for every token next to the card you voted for, except for your own. So if I voted for Eve and someone else voted for you, we would each score one point. Then you just uh, switch characters. Here are some other examples. Charlie Brown, Bob Marley, Nelson Mandela, Peppa Pig, Katy Perry, Rosa Parks, and you just do that. The other version of the game is the pointing variant, which uh, between you and me watching this uh, is the best version. Uh, in this version, instead of using characters, you point at people. Um, now I don't have people here with me, but so in, if let's say I had six, me and five other friends were playing, uh, instead of voting uh, using the character cards, you will write down the names uh, on your cards or on your on your boards and point simultaneously for each one. And like this version, you score points if people agree with you. So, for example, who's most likely to smoke weed? You write down who's least likely in the group, most likely in the group, and then on each one you point simultaneously. Uh, yeah, so those are the three modes, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna be honest, this was a pretty mixed bag for me. First off, 1 to 100 is a pretty blatant ripoff of a much better game called Wavelength. If you're unfamiliar with Wavelength, you use an arrow on, the, on like a dial on this really cool like contraption to decide your answer. Um, using numbers in comparison feels so arbitrary and bland. Never did I ever feel like I should do like, oh, should I say 63 versus 65? It it doesn't have, it doesn't really matter. It, in Wavelength, there's this immediate excitement where you see where the dial is because you open it and reveal and go, oh man, we got it in the perfect area. And when you're, you know, deciding, oh, should we, you know, nudge it this way or this way, there's, there's a lot of interest and discussion. But in this game, it's just, oh, okay, 1 to 100, 80. And then they reveal, oh, I, it's... 74 okay that and the scoring is just way too complicated it's like oh well if it's this and you get this and this and who gives a shit the game should be fun enough on its own without scoring and the scoring is a is just kind of tedious and the game it's in that mode itself is just not very interesting it's just it's a pale imitation of a much better game 1 to 10 is a little bit better. Uh, I did like the dynamic of kind of, it's like almost like a relationship game of, okay, how does the team, how do the teammates perceive each other? Do they disagree? Do they agree? Downside is that's pretty much it. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of excitement, just kind of like, a, oh, okay, yeah, we both agree. Oh, we disagree. Oh, that's kind of funny. I mean, I'd rather do 1 to 10 over 1 to 100, but it really didn't have very much staying power at all. Now, least most was the most successful game mode, but not the version with the characters. That version sucked. Odds are the, the characters were either too obvious or there were a lot of, it, was, it just felt like a lot of dated characters as well. Like it didn't feel like a very well curated list. Some people didn't know who was who, like who was this person or that person. It was just not very interesting. Instead, the best mode the only one that, honestly, I think really worked in this game is the pointing variant, where everyone points at who they think is the least and the most for each category. That was actually very fun. Uh, even though the scoring is like, oh, who cares, right? But as a fun kind of icebreaker type game where we're like, all right, everybody, point. <clears throat> oh, everyone thinks you're the least of this and you're the most of this. It was very interesting and fun seeing how different people perceived each other. If this game was just a deck of prompts for that, I would buy that. That, that, that. that was actually very fun. And if it was packaged maybe with 1 to 10, sure. But considering this is the variant in one of three modes and all of those modes are were, were either okay or not that good, I, it's, it's, it's a very mixed bag. Like, I don't think you'll have a bad time with this, but most of the modes I wasn't very impressed with. Uh, least most was the only one I thought that was actually kind of fun.